Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's math channel, and I'm now answering question number two from the International A Level Pure Mathematics P4 specimen paper um, for at Excel. And this is a question, part A, which is about partial fractions. And in this question here, we're asked to express this fraction here 1 over 2x plus 3 times 3x plus 2 in partial fractions. Okay, so that's what we're asked to do here. So, okay. So basically, when you have to express a fraction in partial fractions, what it means is they want you to split it up into separate fractions. Okay, you want to split this up, take this one fraction and split it up into different parts, partial fractions. The first thing you must do when you are expressing something in partial fractions is you must check to see if it's a proper fraction or an improper fraction. That makes a huge difference. Um, a proper fraction is one in which the order, when we're talking about algebraic fractions, it's when the order of the numerator is less than the order of the denominator. So here we have a constant numerator, it's just got a number, over a denominator which is quadratic. If you were to expand this, you'd get an x squared term as your highest power. So the numerator is of an order less than that of the denominator. So therefore, it is a proper fraction. And you won't have a whole number part when you split it up. Just like with normal fractions, an improper fraction can be expressed as a mixed number, which is a whole number and a proper fraction. So same thing with algebraic fractions. If it's an improper fraction, you'll have a like a whole number part, and then you'll have your um, you know, proper fraction added to it. So this is a proper fraction from the beginning, so there's no need for us to worry about that. We can just go ahead and straight away split it up. So I know that this is 1 over 2x plus 3 times 3x plus 2, and it will split up into a, a constant over 2x plus 3 plus a constant over 3x plus 2. Okay, so you have... A linear, two linear factors, um, you know, a pair of linear factors will split up into a constant over 2x plus 3 plus a constant over 3x plus 2. Because these have to be proper fractions, the numerator has to be an order less than that of the denominator. And an order less than linear is is um, a constant. So it's going to be a over 2x plus 3 plus b over 3x plus 2. Now to find the values of a and b, which we have to do in order to have split this up into partial fractions, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by the LCM of the denominators, which is 2x plus 3 times 3x plus 2. If I multiply this side, the left side, by 2x plus 3 times 3x plus 2, they cancel out, leaving you with the numerator, which is 1. If I multiply this side, the whole of this side, by 2x plus 3 times 3x plus 2, well, when I multiply it by this term, the 2x plus 3 part will cancel out, leaving you with 3x plus 2, so a times 3x plus 2 plus... And when you multiply by this term, 2x plus 3 times 3x plus 2, the 3x plus 2 cancels out, leaving you with b times 2x plus 3. So now I have this um, partial fraction thing here, which I now, so this, this identity here, which I now need to find the values of a and b from. So now to find the value of a and b, there's a number of methods um, Two main methods you could use. One is by substituting values of x which cause one of these terms to become zero or be multiplied by zero so it, be, it disappears leaving you with the other term. And the other method is to compare the coefficients of um, x and the constant on both sides of this identity and then in this case I think you'd have to set up a pair of simultaneous equations. Personally I think in this particular case it's easier to substitute values that make the brackets zero. So if you if you think about 3x plus 2 what makes 3x plus 2 equal 0? Well, the value of x that makes 3x plus 2 0 is when x equals minus 2 thirds. Okay, so if I, if I replace x with minus 2 thirds in the whole equation, I'm left with 1 is equal to that. This becomes 0 because you have 3 times minus 2 thirds, which is minus 2, plus 2, which is 0. So the a term disappears, and you're left with b times, and you have 2 times minus 2 thirds plus 3. Okay, what that gives you is you'll have um, 1 equals b times, you're going to have minus 4 over 3 plus uh, 9 over 3, 
minus 4 over 3 plus 9 over 3 just to get them ready to add together that's my that's going to be 5 over 3 so 1 is equal to 5 over 3 times B so we can say B therefore is going to be 3 fifths so B is 3 fifths so I know the value of B is 3 fifths so this B is 3 fifths now and now I need to find the value of A so if I substitute inside here um, the value that makes this bracket 0 and I, I can see when 2x plus 3 equals 0 x is minus 3 over 2 so if I put x equals minus 3 over 2 inside wherever x is what's going to happen is this term will remain um, and this term will become 0 so you'll have 3 times because this becomes 0 because you have 2 times minus 3 over 2 which gives you minus 3 minus 3 plus 3 is 0 here you're going to have 3 times minus 3 over 2 plus 2 that gives you 1 equals you're going to have a times you will have minus 9 over 2 plus 4 over 2 because 2 is the same as 4 over 2 and that gives you 1 equals minus 9 plus 4 is minus 5 so you have minus 5 over 2 uh, times a so therefore a is going to be minus 2 over 5 okay so now we have a and b a is minus 2 fifths okay so we can say that you got minus 2 over 5 times 2x plus 3 plus 3 over 5 times 3x plus 2 so you're going to have your fraction which was 1 over the original fraction was 1 over 2x plus 3 plus 3x plus 2 is identical to a which is minus 2 over 5 so you have minus 2 over 5 times 2x plus 3 plus and b was 3 fifths right yes so 3 over 5 times 3x plus 2 and there we have our answer to part a Okay, that's the answer to part A. We have split this into a pair of partial fractions. Okay, now we're going to move on to part B. Okay, so part B says hence. Hence means using what we just found. We're going to have to use that somehow in this question. Find in the form y equals f of x the general solution of this differential equation. Okay, so we're going to have to use what we already found in the last part of the question which is this okay we're gonna to have to use this somehow in this question right now maybe you can't see exactly how we're going to use it but let's just start by trying to solve this differential equation um, in the way that we know how okay so now to solve a differential equation basically as it mentions here what it means is you have to make y the subject now this is called a differential equation because in the equation when we start you have a something like a differential you have dy dx okay this is called a first order differential equation because it's not d squared y dx squared or d cubed y d cubed dx cubed it's just dy dx first order not second or third order and that's all we deal with in in p4 we only deal with uh, first order differential equations so our objective here is to find um, the find what y is in terms of x okay so that's what objective is in order to solve a differential equation that there's lots of different um, ways that people do it now I'm going to show you a way which you might find a bit strange in the beginning if you haven't learned this already but I just don't like for students to just memorize how to do a process without understanding what's going on in that process okay so what we're actually I mean, some people they just say all right these this has to go up there this has to go down there and these two have to go on this side and like you know um, the y's have to go where the dy is and the x's have to go where the dx is and the dx has to go up here and that you know <clears throat> there's not really any understanding of what's actually happening what we're actually doing here in order to solve this differential equation just like we solve any type of equation is we have to do something to both sides of the equation okay that will help us solve the equation so for example when you have 3x equals 2 we want to find x we have to do something to both sides of the equation which helps us to solve the equation so to get rid of the 3 we divide by th 3 
on both sides, leaving with x equals 2 thirds. So we divided one side by 3, and we also divided the other side by 3. Okay, so that's like, you know, a basic concept that we know from, you know, primary school even. Now, what we're going to do here in order to get rid of the dy dx, basically what we have to do, is we're going to integrate both sides of the equation, because we can't just do one side of the equation, integrate both sides of the equation with respect to x. So I'm going to have something like this. Okay, so I'm taking whatever's written here and I'm integrating it with respect to x. But I have to do the same thing to the other side. So I have to also integrate the other side of the equation with respect to x. Now what happens here is the dx is cancelled out. Okay, and now you end up with the integral of 2x plus 3 times 3x plus 2 with respect to y equals 5y, integral of 5y with respect to x. Okay, so you end up with something like this first. So I'll just write it out so we can see clearly what's going on. dy equals the integral of 5y with respect to x. Now, we cannot integrate with respect to y something which has x in it. And we cannot integrate something with respect to x which something has y in it. So what we must do is we must what's called separate the variables, which is kind of like what I was talking about earlier, okay, where you move the dx up here and the y on this side and the x is on that side. It's kind of like that, but here I've kind of tried to show you in a way where you can understand what, you know, it's like some mathematical process we're doing, not just moving things around. We're actually doing something to one side of the equation that helps us to, you know, um, achieve our objective so we must do the same thing to the other side of the equation something that makes sense mathematically and now at this stage here I have to separate the variables so I bring the y's to the side that says dy and the x's to the, to the side that says um, dx so what I can do is I can divide both sides by y and divide both sides by 2x plus 3 times 3x plus 2 if I divide both sides by 2x plus 3 times 3x plus 2 this side you know, you let you get rid of that from this side, and you end up with it on this side. So on this side, I'm going to have I'll I'll re leave the five out here for now, and I'll have one over. Well, it's actually five over, but I'll leave it like this. Um, two x plus three times three x plus two, with respect to x. So the x is terms are going on this side, and on this side I can write this as one over y dy. Okay, so I've divided both sides by y. This, that's why the y has ended up on this side, not on this side. And I've also divided both sides by 2x plus 3 times 3x plus 2. So that ended up on this side as a denominator. Okay, that's what I've done for me to get this. This is called separating the variables, in which I've now caused the y terms to be on the side that says dy, and the x terms on the side that says dx. Now I can integrate this with respect to x. And when I integrate 1 over y with respect to x, uh, sorry, this side with respect to y and this side with respect to x. If I integrate this side with respect to y, I'm going to get the lin of the modulus of y and equals, and here I'm going to have 5 times. Now, what I have to do here is I have to integrate this. To integrate this, I need to express this in terms of partial fractions, which I have already got over here done from part A, because I can't integrate it the way it is I need to split it into separate fractions. So I've already got that from here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to replace okay, this with minus 2 over 5 times 2x plus 3 plus 3 over 5 times 3x plus 2. I'm going to close the bracket and I need to integrate that with respect to x. So that's what we had from part A. That's where it says hence. That's why we have to use that. Now, in order for me to continue here, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do something that makes life a bit easier for me. I can see that there's a 5 that's a common denominator um, in both of these numerators, uh, in both of these denominators. So I can say mine, I can say 5 over 5. Okay, and then I have the integral of, I'll write this the other way around, 3 over 3x plus 2 minus 2 over 2x plus 3 just 
to have the minus sign not in the beginning just makes life a bit easier this five and five cancels out and now I'm left with um, something I can integrate so I'm gonna have here if I integrate this I'm gonna have three times the lin of the modulus of 3x plus 2 then I have to divide by the differential of what's inside the function which is 3 so I have to divide by 3 I've got minus 2 times the lin of the modulus of 2x plus 3 and I have to divide by 2 because the differential was inside the function is 2 and I'm going to have plus c which incorporates the constant which is from both this side and this side when I integrated them okay so these cancel out and now I've got something um, where I have to express it as y equals a function of x okay so I want I don't want to have a lin here so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to write this as the lin of the modulus of y equals I can combine these together into one lin using the laws of logarithms and this is a subtraction so I can use division so this is like the lin of 3x plus 2 over 2x plus 3 okay and then what I can also do is I can call this the lin of for example a I can call c I can say let c equals the lin of a it's just a constant c and a are both constants and that that way what I can do next is I can write this as the lin of the modulus of y equals the lin of the modulus of a times 3x plus 2 over 2x plus 3 so that's my constant of integration it's now incorporated within this okay and now I'm able to just say okay I can rewrite this as uh, y equals a times 3x plus 2 over 2x plus 3 and there we have our answer that is now y as a function of x and we're done that is the general solution to this differential equation and that's the answer and we used what we were asked to use which was this from part a because at this particular stage here we had to integrate this so we had to split it up into partial fractions first which we already did in part a okay and there we have the answer to this question um, and this step here is important you know this is a constant c which we can just call another constant lin a because it's just an arbitrary constant for integration and it incorporates the constant from both sides of this integration so and then that way we can incorporate that a that 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 constant term inside this as a product and we've got our answer nice and easy um, so this is a question here which is part a was about partial fractions part b is about differential equations I'm going to include a playlist uh, about partial fractions also a playlist about um, differential equations and um, also there'll be the playlist of the paper that this question is taken from which is a specimen paper and you can subscribe to my channel from the icon you'll find somewhere in the middle of the screen and at the top of the screen will be a card which will take you to another p4 paper that you might be interested in thank you for watching and i hope to see you soon